Welcome to this year's installment of the Top 10 Recruits from a Decade Ago. The 2014 recruiting class was filled with absolute units. Christian McCaffrey, Jamal Adams, Nick Chubb, Quentin Nelson, and me. Wow, I'm just as shocked as you. None of these guys made the top 10? Seriously? Anyways, this recruiting class was absolutely stacked. It just might be the most dominant class I have ever covered. Per usual, I will be using the list from Rivals.com. And with that being said, let's dive into number 10. Coming out of Washington, D.C., Jalen, aka Tease Tabor, was one of the top corners in the country. He was a super instinctive player, picking off five passes and had 17 pass breakups as a senior. According to the Washington Post, he did not allow a single reception as a junior. To me, this sounds a little too good to be true. But Tabor was clearly a beast in high school. Here's how he was described by Scout.com. Quote, Tabor is a lethal combination of size, speed, and physical play. When he gets his hands on a player at the line of scrimmage, the receiver doesn't get off of it easily. He changes direction well and closes on passes. After initially committing to Arizona, one week later, Tabor switched his commitment to Florida, hoping to help the Gators rebuild after they went 4-8 the previous season. Get some time on that possession and a one-handed pick in the end zone by Jalen Tabor. Woo! As a true freshman, Tabor started five games and played in all 12. He led all freshmen in tackles and overall had an impressive statistical season earning freshman All-American first team honors. In 2015 and 2016, he developed into one of the top corners in the country, earning first team all SEC honors twice and capped off his three year career with the sixth most pass breakups in school history. Also, he had eight interceptions in the final two years three of which he took to the house. Jalen is a instinctive football playing guy, has great ball skills. I'm very, I've been very impressed with what I've seen on him on film. Tabor declared after his junior season and initially projected as a first round pick. His NFL scouting report highlighted his excellent hand-eye coordination and ball skills as major positives. However, then the combine happened. Projected as a first round pick most of his junior season, Tabor's stock began to drop when he ran a 4.62 40-yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine in late February. Time speed is what it is. Uh, I take playing speed as a more important gauge than time speed. Still, the Lions loved his skill set, besides his speed, and took him in the second round. Ultimately, his career in Detroit was disappointing. He started as the fourth corner and even moved to safety later on to try and make up for his speed disadvantage. Overall, Tabor started five games over the first two seasons before being released during final cuts in 2019. Tabor was sort of a bounce around practice squad free agent guy after that. Currently, he is on a United States Football League roster. And overall, even though his NFL career didn't live up to expectations, Tease Tabor was a total beast in college and certainly worthy of a five-star grade in high school. At number nine, coming out of Hoover, Alabama, Marlon Humphrey also played corner. According to Bud Elliott, a national recruiting analyst, quote, he has excellent size and good length, which is strongly desired in the SEC as defenses like to play a lot of press man-to-man -man coverage. Humphrey is also very athletic. On top of that, Marlon Humphrey was the son of former NFL running back Bobby Humphrey. Also, Marlon Humphrey's mother is UAB's school record holder in the 400 meter dash. This dude has elite athletic genes. This was apparent when he stepped on the track as well. In high school, he was a world-class level hurdler, taking silver as a junior at the 2013 World Youth Championships in the 110 hurdles. Ultimately, as for football, Marlon Humphrey stayed local and committed to Alabama. They hand it off to Stephen Mitchell Jr. Tied, spring it out and they hammer him for a loss. Marlon Humphrey. After initially redshirting, Humphrey became an integral piece in a vaunted Alabama defense in 2015. He had three interceptions, was a consistent difference maker, and had a huge onside kick recovery in the national championship. From there, Humphrey continued to expand his Alabama legacy, developing into one of the top corners in college football. He earned first team All-American honors before leaving school early to go to the NFL. As far as his scouting report went, 
he was as complete a corner prospect as it gets, projecting as a day one starter in the NFL. And with the 16th pick in the first round, the Ravens selected Humphrey as their future number one corner. For his NFL career, he wasn't a full-time starter right away, but after adjusting to the league, Humphrey has turned into a total beast and has lived up to expectations. To this point, he's a three-time Pro Bowler and had a dominant first-team All-Pro campaign in 2019. 2023 was the first year that he was really banged up, missing the first part of the season with a foot injury that required surgery. But overall, Marlon Humphrey has been one of the top corners in the game for the last five years. At number eight, coming out of Oakley, California, Joe Mixon ranked out as the second best running back in the country. This was via Bleacher Report, quote, this young man is tall, strong, and powerful. He possesses great speed for his frame and can break away once he gets to the second level. Also a natural receiver, he has great hands and has no issues motioning out wide to run routes from the slot. As a senior, Mixon rushed for over 1,700 yards and 23 touchdowns, and after receiving 47 college offers, he ultimately chose Oklahoma. But the big news coming this afternoon from OU President David Boren as Mixon has been suspended from the football program for the entire season. As a college freshman, Mixon was suspended from the team after a misdemeanor assault charge in October 2014 where he punched a woman, breaking bones in her face, and resulting in hospitalization and surgery. After his freshman year, Bob Stoops allowed Mixon back on the team, where he became a sensational piece to the offense immediately. In 2015, Mixon burst onto the scene as a difference maker. In 2016, he was one of the best backs in the country, earning first team all Big 12 honors after nearly putting up 2,000 all-purpose yards and he had a staggering 6.8 yards per carry. Following 2016, Mixon declared for the draft. Truth be told, he projected as a first round talent, but due to that incident his freshman year, many teams took Mixon off their boards entirely. However, in the second round, the Bengals selected him, which led to public outrage. One ESPN writer wrote, no 2017 pick enters the league under more intense scrutiny or controversy. But as an NFL player, since being drafted, Mixon has been the Bengals' bell cow back for seven years, eclipsing the 1,000-yard mark four times and earned Pro Bowl honors in 2021. Strictly speaking about his talent, there's no question that Mixon has lived up to the billing. At number seven, the top quarterback in the nation in 2014 was Scottsdale, Arizona's own Kyle Allen. Here's his scouting report via Bud Elliott, the national recruiting analyst. Quote, he has adequate size to succeed at the highest levels of college football. He's a bright guy who really has an advanced understanding of football for a high school player. Allen had over 8,000 yards and 86 passing touchdowns in his career. He also set the U.S. Army All-American Bowl record for passing yards in a game. And he was also high school teammates with tight end Mark Andrews. After committing to Texas A&M, there was a good shot that Kyle Allen was going to be the heir to Johnny Manziel, which was a tall order to live up to. To begin his college career as a true freshman, Allen participated in an ongoing battle for the starting quarterback job. At first he sat the bench, but ended up winning the job in October, and he showed off his potential, helping upset number three Auburn with four touchdowns. And later, he won the Liberty Bowl game MVP. After flashing potential as a freshman, Allen had a solid five-game start to his sophomore season, leading the SEC in pass efficiency. However, things turned sideways in the biggest game of his career to that point versus Alabama. He threw three pick sixes in an overall brutal day. It only got worse after a horrific performance versus Ole Miss. Backup Kyler Murray was named the starter moving forward. Later, Allen said that he had suffered an AC sprain in his throwing shoulder versus Alabama, but he decided to tough it out. Allen eventually returned as the starter at the end of the season, but afterwards announced that he was transferring from AM after what would be considered a disappointing run for the number one overall quarterback prospect. Allen transferred to Houston, which was during the pre-NIL days, so he had to sit out a year. 
After sitting out, Allen was named Houston starter in 2017, but after throwing four picks in three games, he was benched. Just based on his measurable talents, Allen decided to forego his last season of eligibility to declare for the NFL draft, which was an interesting decision considering that he found his way to the bench for poor performance on two different college teams. Allen ended up going undrafted in 2018 and eventually signed with the Panthers practice squad. After a series of releases and re-signings, Allen was promoted to the active roster after multiple quarterback injuries. Eventually, Allen actually became the main starter for the Panthers in 2019, going five and seven and throwing for over 3,000 yards. Overall, it was a pretty rough season but it was still impressive that he was able to be in that position after going undrafted. Since then, he has been a consistent backup, making millions of dollars in the process. So I guess his decision to go pro paid off in some sense. At number six, the number one athlete of 2014 was Southern California's Adoree Jackson. At just five foot 10 and 170 pounds, Adoree was, well, unsurprisingly, a spectacular athlete. He played three sports and on the football field lined up at running back, receiver, DB, and returner. He was a playmaker that compared to all pro Tyron Matthew for his versatility. And here's his scouting report via Farrell Warren from SB Nation. Quote, on special teams, Jackson is an elite punt returner with excellent vision and lateral burst to help him exploit backside lanes. He's a track star as well with a top 200 meter time of 2169, not to mention having won the state championship in the long jump as a sophomore in 2012. I'll be going to college at the University of Southern California. And a big return for Dory Jackson. Dory Jackson saying adios. Out the gate, Dory was one of USC's most prominent players lining up at receiver, DB, and returner. He was named Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, as well as a Freshman All-American, highlighted by his big-time 2014 Holiday Bowl performance, where he had a 98-yard kickoff return touchdown and a 71-yard touchdown reception. The following year, Adoree was a first-team All-Pac-12 football player and also the Pac-12 Long Jump Champion. He even placed fifth at nationals with a PR just below 26 feet. If you're not a track guy, trust me, that's pretty freakish considering track was his second sport. For his junior year in 2016, Adori began to focus on one position, cornerback, and he became a total monster on the football field, winning the Jim Thorpe Award as the nation's top defensive back. At the end of his career, he finished with eight total return touchdowns and projected as a first round pick. In the 2017 NFL Draft, Adoree Jackson was selected 18th overall by the Tennessee Titans, just two picks after Marlon Humphrey. Overall, he developed into a pretty good player, though not as great as a guy like Marlon Humphrey. Adoree hasn't earned any serious accolades or awards, but has been a consistent starter in the league. In 2021, he signed a three-year, $39 million deal with the Giants. As of now, he just finished up that contract and announced that he wants to play for a Super Bowl contender as he hits free agency. Coming in at number five, the state of Virginia's own Quinn Blanding was a tall, versatile safety that played just about everywhere. He was described as the following, quote, Bayside High School plays Blanding as a deep safety in many of the clips, but he has the ability to come down in the box as well. Blanding can be a big hitter and is sound in his approach not getting juked out too much. He is physical when meeting the ball carrier as well. Blanding is a man among boys. The young star safety decided to stay local and commit to the University of Virginia, where he became an immediate stud. Jones with the time, deflected and intercepted. It's Quinn Blanding down the sideline and Blanding is in. As a true freshman, Blanding started 12 games and really became a centerpiece of the defense. He broke the school freshman record with 123 tackles, along with three interceptions and a sack. From there, Blanding continued to assert himself as a dominant tackler. He was an instinctual run defender and wasn't afraid of contact. As a four-year starter, Blanding would go on to earn three first-team All-ACC honors, 
and also made second team All-American in 2017. Ultimately, he finished as the school's all-time leading tackler. But as great a college player as he was, Blanding didn't project well to the NFL. Despite his size and instincts, he was slow by NFL standards and ended up going undrafted. Blanding went on to be a camp body for three years, never making a final roster after the preseason before being out of the NFL. Overall, he certainly lived up to the five-star expectations in the college ranks, but he's also a good example of how five-star grades don't necessarily translate to the pros due to lacking in certain areas of their game that don't make as much of a difference in college. For these next four recruits, there's no consensus number one player across the board. In fact, our number four recruit on Rivals was ranked number one on both ESPN and 24-7 Sports. That was the freight train known as Leonard Fournette. Fournette's career was already the stuff of legend in high school. As a freshman, this dude was built like a tank. And while most of us at that age are playing freshman ball or JV, Fournette rushed for 2,500 yards and 30 touchdowns on varsity. And he became the first freshman ever to earn a scholarship to LSU. By his senior year, Fournette stood around 6'1 and 220. Not only did he play with the violent power of a guy like Larry Zonka, but he also had the speed of an all-state sprinter. Just a personal note here, since I graduated the same year as all these guys, I always kept tabs on the top recruits of my class, especially the running backs, since that was the position I played. I also thought of myself as a pretty fast dude, considering I won state in the 100 meter. Then I found out about this dude, who outweighed me by around 60 pounds, and not only that, but he was as fast, if not faster, than me. I was shook when I found this out. Some dudes are seriously built different. So anyways, after becoming the clear-cut number one back, Fournette stayed local and committed to LSU. The hype surrounding this dude when he arrived on campus was out of control. He was often called the next Adrian Peterson. Immediately, not only did he look the part as a true freshman, but he started bullying defenders immediately. Fournette into the secondary, runs over! By the end of his sophomore year, Fournette was one of, if not the best running back in college football. Week good 16, injuries set him back a bit, but it didn't drop his draft stock in the least. Despite the value of running backs dwindling in recent years, Fournette was seen as a consensus top five pick, and he ended up being selected fourth overall by Jacksonville in 2017. Now, his pro career, kind of like Jadavion Clowney, has been mostly underwhelming due to the mountain of mostly unattainable hype. His career yards per carry is under four. He never made a Pro Bowl, and he's been banged up a lot. But he did have the legendary playoff run with the Bucks back when they won the Super Bowl. So, no matter what, playoff Lenny will always be a legend, and he will always be remembered as a college football sensation. At number three, the top corner in the country was New Jersey's own Jabril Peppers. Honestly, even though he was listed as a corner, Peppers should have been listed as an athlete. He was a playmaker everywhere he lined up, displaying elite traits at multiple positions. Here's how he was described. Quote, he can play any position in the secondary, but strong safety is his ideal landing spot. Peppers approaches the line with the velocity of a top flight return man and the ferocity of a blitzing linebacker. Peppers ended up committing to Michigan, and after redshirting his freshman year, Michigan brought in Jim Harbaugh, and under Harbaugh, Peppers thrived. Where Colorado is pressure coming to Peppers with the sack exploding into the backfield. They put him everywhere, and it worked. In 12 games in 2015, Peppers had 45 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, 10 pass breakups, and had one of the highest kick return averages in the country. He also appeared on offense occasionally and had two offensive touchdowns. The following season, he just became even more of a beast. Easily one of the most impactful and versatile players in the country, Peppers took home the Nagurski Woodson Defensive Player of the Year, the Butkiss Fitzgerald Linebacker of the Year, the Rogers White Return Specialist of the Year, and was a unanimous All-American. And after his junior season, Peppers left school early to enter the NFL Draft. Ranked as the third best safety entering the NFL Draft, 
and projecting as a first or second round pick. Peppers appeared to have a bright career ahead of him. The only knock on him, however, was the whole jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none argument. But this didn't scare away Cleveland near the end of the first round, and they took Peppers 25th overall. Overall, Peppers never developed into a special player in the NFL, or at least at first. He has maintained being a starting level player up to today. He's been a part of three teams, and it appears that Peppers has only gotten better over time. After arriving in New England, it turned out to be a great fit. Peppers produced the best season of his career PFF grade-wise in 2023, where he ranked out as the sixth best safety. Speaking of freak athletes, Coming in at number two, just look at Miles Garrett in practice next to his fellow offensive and defensive linemen. Even in the state of Texas, Garrett was just bigger, stronger, and faster than everyone. What's crazy was he wasn't even into football most of his life. As a high schooler, Garrett had to come to grips with just how much physical talent he really had. And he went from a kid with potential to a dominant, relentless force. Bleacher Report praised him back when he was a junior, describing his weight as a chiseled 240, and that he could step onto a college field and contribute instantly. Well, after a dominant senior season, Garrett enrolled at Texas A&M, and like many of these five-star prospects so far, Garrett was one of the team's most impactful players as a true freshman. His 11 and a half sacks set a freshman SEC record. By his sophomore year, Garrett was the defensive anchor. He earned first-team All-American honors and capped off that season as the Bill Willis Award winner, given to the nation's top defensive lineman. Despite limitations as a junior due to injuries, Garrett was still a consensus All-American. The moves that he could pull off were staggering. Nobody at his size could do the things that he could do. And it didn't take long for NFL scouts to see that this guy had more physical potential than anybody in the upcoming NFL draft. Once he declared for the draft, Garrett immediately ranked out as the top prospect among big boards. Months later, Garrett went number one to Cleveland. With game-wrecking potential, Garrett displayed his world-class athleticism on his first pro snap. And on third down, pressure, and they got him! There he is! First play, first sack! From there, Garrett has only gotten better, and better, and better. Now, seven years after being drafted, Miles Garrett is the Browns' all-time leader in sacks, has five Pro Bowls and three first-team All-Pros to his name. And this year, at the peak of his powers, just one Defensive Player of the Year. Regardless if you agree that he was deserving, Miles Garrett certainly is one of the best NFL players in the game currently. Also, there's this really fascinating video released by the NFL that shows just how serious this dude takes his craft during the offseason. I'll leave a link to it if you're interested. Finally, coming in at number one, the top recruit, according to rivals in 2014, was Deshaun Hand. Now, Hand wasn't the consensus number one guy, like I said earlier, but this dude was on another level in high school. As a junior, he had 110 tackles, 16 sacks, and apparently 40 tackles for loss. When he was a senior, the Washington Post made Hand the subject of a documentary series named First and 17, which followed him both on and off the field. And here was his scouting report, quote, this guy has a good frame, moves well both forward and laterally, has good technique, and appears to be a high motor player. It will be tough to run at him, and it will be tough for opposing tackles in the passing game. Wherever he goes, he should be able to play early and turn into a dominant player at the college level. Also, Hand was a Virginia State Champ wrestler, and after receiving 90 scholarship offers, ultimately, Hand chose Alabama. Yes. Trailing by 35. After arriving in Tuscaloosa, Hand saw playing time as a true freshman, as a rotational D-lineman. Considering it's Alabama, it's understandable that he wasn't a standout player right away. But as the years went by, Hand never really became the standout they expected. Don't get me wrong, he was still pretty good, earning second team all SEC honors in 2016 and 17. Also in 2017, Hand was arrested for DUI, 
Although, Saban didn't suspend him since he didn't drive the car. Overall, he was a good defensive lineman, but just kind of became a guy at Alabama. I don't think you could say that he lived up to the number one recruit hype, but he did play a role in two national championship teams. For a football career beyond college, Hand still projected as a mid-round talent in the NFL, and Detroit eventually took him in the fourth round. He was an initial starter turned back up by his second year, and since then, Deshaun Hand has been able to stay in the league as a backup defensive lineman. In 2023, he appeared in 16 regular season games for the Miami Dolphins. Long-time LSU watchers and have been watching LSU football for probably 56 years, and 50, 60 years. And they've said they think that Fournette is the best back that's ever played at LSU. Embarrassment of riches. Here's Fournette, lead blocker, leads into the secondary. Spills that guy, chance that one, another touchdown. 